Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lesson we're going to see how can we send the identification JSON web token back to the server with each request. We're going to be using an Angular HTTP client interceptor. So this is a new functionality available in the new Angular HTTP client that we are using in this course. The way that this works is whenever we are doing an HTTP request we are going to be adding an extra header. That header will simply contain the JSON web token. This means that the server will always have a token that it can validate and from which it can extract the user ID that corresponds to the request. Let's then implement our authentication interceptor and see it in action. We're going to go here to our application and we're going to create here a new file. We are going to call it off.interceptor.ts and inside it we are going to define our authentication interceptor. So this is going to be simply a class, we are going to call it authentication interceptor and we're going to have it implement the HTTP interceptor angular functionality. So as we can see this is a functionality provided by the new HTTP client that is available here under angular slash common. This class is going to be a normal angular injectable, so we are going to add here the injectable annotation, let's import it from angular core, and with this in place let's now implement the HTTP interceptor interface, we are going to hit alt enter, we are going to choose implement interface, and what we have here is a new method, so let's quickly go over it. As we will see angular interceptors are very similar to express middleware so they are both based upon the same chain of responsibility design. So the first argument that we are going to need here is the HTTP request and we also have here a next function. So this is in every way identical to the next function of express. We are going to call it in order to proceed with the middleware chain and we also have to define here a return result. So this is going to be an observable of HTTP event. And we're going to remove here this throw. We are going to now implement this interception logic. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to try to retrieve the ID token from local storage. And we're going to do so using the local storage get item API. So we're going to see here a couple of cases. First is the token present. If the token is present, we are going to append to an HTTP header, we are going to append the token itself. Let's start by implementing the case when the token would not be present. So let's add here an else clause. In this case, what we need to do is we need to continue the middleware chain. We should not interrupt it, otherwise we are going to get an error. Or maybe worse than that, nothing happens and we block the middleware chain. In order to proceed with the middleware chain, we are going to be using next. Let's see how next works. Next takes one method which is called handle. And handle takes one argument which is an HTTP request. So this is the request that is traveling through the middleware chain until it gets sent to the browser using the normal standard AJAX API we want to either modify this request by adding it extra headers or we want to send it unchanged to the rest of the middleware chain which is what we want to do here so we want to pass it our request and in order to make it travel through the middleware chain we want to return it here now let's do the case where we do have an id token so what we want to do in that case is to take the current request of the middleware chain and we want to create a clone request. This API is all based on immutability so we cannot modify the HTTP request object and add it headers but we can clone it and add modifications to the clone at construction time. So we are going to clone the HTTP request object and we are going to modify it. We are going to pass in here a configuration object that defines which modifications do we want to do when compared to the original request which remains unchanged. So let's see what modifications we can do. We are going to hit control space and we can see that we have here a series of options. One of them here is the headers property. So we can specify here a new set of HTTP headers and we don't have to fill them in manually. 
we can go to the headers of the original request and we can clone those headers and modify them by adding a new header, the authorization header. So that is the header that usually contains the information that allows to identify the user. So we are going to call the set method on it and we are going to write to the authorization header. This method set takes two arguments. The first is the header that we want to append to the list of headers and the second value is the value of the header. The authorization header, like any other HTTP header, is really just a string, so we could put in here any value. We could put, for example, directly the ID token, but like so many other headers, we are going to be following some common web conventions, so we are going to split the header into multiple parts. The first part of the header is going to say what type of authorization value we have here. So this is a bearer token. This means that we are going to tell the server give access to the bearer of this token. We are going to have a space added here. And the second part of the authorization header is the ID token itself, which is a string. So we have created a cloned request and we have added a new authorization header that is following this common web convention but essentially it simply contains the JSON web token that we have here in local storage. Now with the cloned request what we're going to do is we are going to call next.handle and we're going to pass in the cloned request that contains the new header and as usual we are going to return this so that we can proceed with the middleware chain. And with this in place, we have completed the implementation of our interceptor logic. If we would try now our program, nothing would have changed because we need to plug in this class here at the level of our application module. We are going to configure here a new provider. So I'm going to paste in the configuration and we're going to review it together. So we are going to define that this is a provider of type multi. So the flag multi is set to true. This means that there can be multiple values for this particular provider. So there could be multiple HTTP interceptors all organized together in a chain. We are adding here our class, our authentication interceptor class that we have defined here. And here in the provide property, we are going to say to which injection token do we want to associate our class with. So if we click inside HTTP interceptors, we're going to see that this is simply an injection token. So it uniquely identifies sort of a dependency injection bucket where we are going to register multiple interceptors. At the application startup time, what is going to happen is that Angular is going to retrieve all the interceptors associated to this injection token so it's going to receive an array with all the interceptors. With this in place we are now ready to try out this functionality because we already have here a valid token. So let's switch to the browser to a larger window, let's refresh here the application and let's have a look here for example at the Ajax request that triggered here the loading of this data, so this call to slash API slash lessons. So let's have a look at the request in detail, at the request headers. If we scroll down, we're going to see that we have here the authorization header as expected, and it has the value bearer, and in front of it, it has our JSON web token that was retrieved from local storage. So this means that now the server, together with this request here, will also receive the bearer token. It will be able to validate it, both for validity in general, to make sure that this could only have been granted this token to someone in possession of the user password, and it will also be able to validate if the token is expired or not. So what we're going to do next is, we're going to add that validation logic in our server.